the Edifier Neobuds Pro was a cult favorite. It destroyed its competition at a killer price point. The successor is interesting. Namaste, we are DHRME. Dudes honestly review many earbuds. Firstly, we're glad Edifier doesn't leave you with one color option anymore. You can choose from black and ivory. There are many things that have stayed the same here, guys. You get an IP54 dust and water resistance rating and seven sets of silicone ear tips in the box, which means there's a much better chance of you getting the right penetration for the best isolation. That's still top of the range. No wireless charging though, and that's available on much cheaper buds in 2023. Who knows when Apple might remove the USB Type-C port altogether and when everyone else will follow suit. The touch controls on the buds work well and are responsive. If they're not, we found that changing the sensitivity in the app using the slider down below help fix it. The control options are limited though. You've only got a double and triple tap at your disposal. We've set the left bud to toggle between ANC modes and volume down, and the right bud to play pause and volume up. That's it. No single tap, no long press, no swiping, no pinching, no squeezing. Now the battery life on the buds are advertised to be four hours with an additional 12 hours from the case with ANC on, but we don't take our numbers at face value. So we ran it through our DHRME battery test and we got three hours and 10 minutes. Wow. And that was with ANC on high and LDAC enabled. Yes, it's got LDAC, but more on that later. But that's just one number. We squeezed seven and a half hours without ANC and with the AAC codec, and five and a half hours with ANC and the AAC codec. There's also fast charging on board with five minutes, giving you two hours of use according to Edifier's numbers. Overall, the solid plastic build feels sturdy with no odd creakage. There's a little pairing button in the case and also a Knight Rider style LED that you can change the color of in the app. Yes, there's an app, but more on that later too. Oh, and this is something I noticed a little later in my testing is that the buds sometimes stay connected to my phone even after I put the buds in the case. I needed to readjust them in the case and try again. Not fun. Thanks to all those tips included in the box, it's easy to find the right fit. The stem style buds make it easy to adjust the fit in your ears without any accidental taps. The tips have neither a shallow nor a very deep insertion into your ear canal, making the fit and seal quite good. However, due to the thicker nozzle size, you will feel the buds touching the inner part of your ear canal. It's not bad for long periods of time and we easily got used to it. But if you're sensitive to this, then it's something to keep in mind. Given that these don't stick out too much, we'd say they're all right for side sleepers, but not amazing. Oh, did you hear the story about the popsicles, icicles, and test? All right, guys, a quick wind test of the NFR Neobuds Pro 2. Popping up pops, high side, icicle. Test, testing, one, two, three. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. We always like to hear your interpretation of this test. All right, now let's stop recording before I get hit by something. In noisy conditions, the Neobuds Pro 2 does a good job cancelling out the car noises from the background. But you notice Kevin's voice becomes more muffled especially when he speaks softly. And since in this particular test, there was also some wind, you could hear that too. And unless you talk really loudly, the wind will beat your voice. All that wind interference isn't going to make your phone calls clear or pleasant. So we definitely wouldn't recommend it for that. Overall, we would say these are fine in quiet conditions, but otherwise, look elsewhere. The Fuckman controls are incredibly weak sauce. You get nothing more than the double tap for answer hang up. The volume controls only work with music and not for calls. And the buds don't default to transparency mode when on a call, but go to A and C. Very odd since you want to be aware of your surroundings and there's also no way of changing it. Okay, Fuckman out. Active noise cancelling, the new Buds Pro 2 came in at tier A for us on this scale. It does a good job at the low end, but still lets in voices and higher end frequencies. Curiously, it feels slightly worse than the Neo Buds Pro 1 across all frequencies, but we would keep them in the same tier though. You have three levels of noise cancelling, high, medium, and low, with a separate setting for wind. But mostly we use these on high. Right, Tauli? You wanna get high? Um... No, but I do want to talk about the wind. Listening to music with wind blowing is not pleasant since you'll hear the wind right through these buds. Luckily, the wind reduction ANC mode does block it out to a large extent. The good part is that you can switch between ANC modes using the buds. So we could switch to wind reduction while on our bike without taking the phone out of our pocket. Then there's the transparency mode. The only good news is that there's only a bit of white noise, especially compared to the Niagara Falls you could hear on the previous model. But the sound piped into the buds in transparency mode is slightly muffled 
and cuts out the low end. It's okay in a pinch, but not something you'd want to wear and use to have conversations with people. But luckily that was in balanced ambient mode. Putting it into voice enhancement mode did make things better for conversations. There's also a background sound mode, which seems to enhance more of the low end too. We've been critical of the Edifier app in the past for the weird permissions it asked for, and that hasn't changed. There's still a bunch of Baidu and Tencent APIs asking for a bunch of data. Something an app that configures an audio device that I purchased should not need. Other than that though, if you ignore the fact that half the app is an in-built shopping and marketing exercise, the app worked pretty well for us. A useful feature on Android is the settings that stay in your notification shade. You can use this to toggle between different ANC modes, EQ presets, or go straight to the app. There's no wireless charging on board, like we said, but there are some other extras. The NeoBuds Pro 2 have wear detection that work pretty reliably. Another thing I noticed later in my testing was that it takes an extra second or two before the buds pause your music when you take them out, and the same goes for resuming audio when you put them back in your ear. You can customize if audio resumes again or not. However, disabling wear detection still does not change ANC behavior. Like Apple, take a butt out, ANC gets disabled. An underrated extra feature is that we can pull connection from a previously paired device. But man, the connectivity options are sparse otherwise. There's no multipoint, no Google Fast Pair or Microsoft Swift Pair and the pairing button is in the case. You can also initiate pairing from the app if you're so inclined, but the connectivity is probably the weakest aspect of the NeoBuds Pro 2. In addition to the connectivity, there are some issues we should talk about. The first generation of the NeoBuds Pro had some quality control issues. Buds died and one of our buds got stuck on Chinese with no way back to English town. Fingers crossed that Gen 2 does better. And you know what? There's nothing to indicate otherwise so far. Also, this is the Neo Buds Pro 2. Edifier also has an unfortunately named NB2 Pro in its lineup, which is an old model and that's a completely different thing. And this one is super weird. When using just one earbud, you'd expect that it would switch to mono mode, right? Nope, you just hear the left or right channel, whichever bud you have in your ear. So if you have your right bud in your ear and the left bud is in the case, well, you're not gonna hear anything meant for the left channel. But enough about the sound. Let's talk about the sound. The reason for the first generation's popularity was that its sound was head and shoulders above the competition at that time, at that price. The second gen should be better, right? These buds have a lot of factors that can affect its sound. There's LDAC, LHDC, AAC, and SBC on board. Two, there's a music, a game, and a spatial mode for latency. And three, EQ presets. There's a classic, which is the default, dynamic, and a four band parametric EQ. Okay, let's start off with the less important stuff. There's also spatial audio on board, but that requires you to turn LDAC off. I'm spatially challenged slash disinterested, so we'll leave that to the other reviewers to talk about. But what we can say is this, the configuration of the spatial mode took forever. And before configuration, the sensors did okay with tracking my head, but the sound became hot garbage. So no, we won't be using it in the near future. For the rest, we tested these with ANC on and LDAC. There is no significant EQ shift between ANC, transparency, and off, which is really pleasant considering that this is the case with many pricier buds too. So far, so good. Now the default sound out of the box is the EQ preset. Classic is, Let's admit it, V-shape, big bass, and the mids are a bit recessed. Interestingly, it's more sub-bass focused than mid-bass focused, so mids don't stand out as too recessed. I enjoyed listening to the music on these. Rock sounds great, uh, hip-hop too. The treble was never fatiguing, and overall, a very enjoyable set of wireless earbuds. You can take it to the next level by employing that four-band parametric EQ. The dynamic preset isn't my cup of tea. Way too much bass and treble spice. I have two small problems with the sound, though. The bass doesn't quite have the speed I enjoy. And the higher treble can, for a lack of a better word, sound a bit cheap. It's not outright terrible, but since we want it to be a bit thorough, we have to say this. Timbre can sound a bit out of whack. The soundstage also seems to be quite narrow, although imaging seemed to be okay. Overall, for casual listening and on the go, these are great buds. To buy or not to buy? Look, we used to love the Edifier NeoBuds Pro, and for good reason. They were the bee's knees back then, and the second gen is pretty good too. But at these prices at launch, is it enough? We get wear detection, a more compact case, and a great sound. ANC is also top notch, but is that enough? The low battery life, ordinary transparency mode, lack of wireless charging, disappointing microphones, and the continuing app situation means that this is just a minor upgrade over the first gen. When we see bigger companies make generational updates every couple of years, it does make you wonder, 
How successful will the successor be? With companies like Sony, Jabra, JBL upping their game in the lower end of the market and a whole battery of low cost competitors, Edifier's got its work cut out. And it makes us wonder if the Neo is new enough. Guys, Edifier sent us these review samples, but we will never accept money from companies whose products we review. So thank you guys for being our real sponsors as YouTube members and patrons. You've edified yet again. And we've been DHRME. Dewey. Dewey. Oh, did you hear the story about the popsicles, icicles, and test crosses? It's a cool story, bro.